Hello and welcome to Curtain Call, a show for actors, dancers, performers and anybody with an interest in theatre. In each week we have a special guest, performance tips, theatre reviews and theatre from all around the world. First up, here's Dean. Hi, I'm Dean and I'm going to be telling you all about the West End's hottest shows. First up is Wicked. This has been a hit at the box office and it leaves audiences stunned. It's based on the book of the same name and explores Oz before Dorothy got there and the relationship between the witches. The first thing you see as you sit down is that amazing set which branches out into the audience. The cast are amazing and the show's climactic songs, Defying Gravity and For Good, left me with chills. The show has won over 80 awards worldwide and its family friendly performances will keep kids and adults alike entertained. I'd also recommend Elton John's Billy Elliot. Yes, it is based on the film. This is another one for the family. The show tells the tale of Billy Elliot, a boy who loves to dance and depicts a bleak England during the Thatcher years. It had me laughing aloud and crying all in the same minute. This is a must see for anyone who loves theatre. And finally, my top show of the week, Avenue Q. This is not one for the family I'm afraid and it contains explicit language and a puppet sex scene. Avenue Q is a laugh out loud musical that tells the timeless story of a recent college graduate named Princeton. He moves into a shabby New York apartment all the way out on Avenue Q. There he meets Kate, the girl next door, Rod, the Republican, Trekkie, the internet sex expert, and Lucy the slut. I don't think I need to explain that one. There's other colourful characters who help Princeton finally discover his purpose in life. The show teaches us some lessons for a medium we all love. Yeah, it's a puppet show, an adult puppet show. Well, that's all from me this week, but you can find my full reviews on our website, curtaincall.com forward slash reviews. Now let's go over to the casting couch where we're interviewing Caitlin, a German theatre practitioner. Hiya Caitlin, thanks for joining us on the show. Hi. Um, do you care to tell us some of the main differences between English and German theatre? First of all, um, the German theatre is much more heavily subsidised than the British one, and we see theatre more than a public um, public cultural service. So we've got the tradition of Stadttheater. And of course, German theatre often perform English plays, but German playwrights, they are relatively or not much yeah. uh, performed in England. So, but we do have influence on, on the British theatre. For example, Piscato and of course, Bertolt Brecht and his method. So, yeah. Um, what about festivals? Like we have the Edinburgh Festival. Do you have any German festivals? We do have German festivals. I uh, coordinated one in Germany as well, but it was just with students on a kind of small scale. Mm -hmm. But we do have the um, Hamburg Theatre Festival, which is quite big, mm -hmm. but we don't have th that established uh, festivals like Edinburgh or something. Yeah. Not, not so much, no. Um, could you tell us about some of German practitioners that defined mm -hmm. German theatre? Yeah, of course. We have, for example, Goethe, Schiller, Kleist and Lessing. And more uh, recently ones are um, Georg Büchner, um, Karl Zuckmeier uh, or Peter Weiss. And um, Schiller and Goethe, did you know they um, rediscovered Shakespeare, oh. whom the British had forgotten. And um, we also, it's very interesting, we have a, a director theatre, oh. which is a regie theatre, where directors more or less reinvent the play, where in Britain they kind of put the focus on, on the writer yeah. and conveying his intention through the performance. Yeah. So oh, well, thank you for that, Caitlin. Now we're going to go over to Tom with some singing tips. Now, if you're planning on singing a musical number anytime soon, then there are a few steps which you can take in order to keep your voice fine-tuned and in a healthy condition. So here are a few vocal health tips. Tip number one is all about warming up. The voice box, as it's sometimes described, is an amazing complex device that is made up of many muscles, cartilages and other anatomy. When we use our voice in any way, all these things start moving and working together. So in order to prepare the voice for this movement, you must first warm it up. And you can do this by carrying out around 20 to 30 minutes of warm-up techniques. You can find out more about warm-up techniques from the website below. Believe it or not, every part of the body has a direct impact on our singing voice, so it's important to warm up the whole body before you begin your vocal warm-ups. 
Things such as stretching, jogging and jiggling your body around are really good things to do. This physically prepares the whole body and puts you in a brilliant state to start singing comfortably and healthily. Tip number two uh, about good things to eat and drink. There are some brilliant things to eat and drink that can help maintain great vocal health. Of course, one of the most obvious ones is about water and drinking water is key to keeping your vocal folds hydrated and lubricated. Failing to drink enough water will lead to dehydration, meaning all the vocal folds will be start to strain and tire more easily. It takes about 20 minutes before your body becomes hydrated from when you take a drink, so keep drinking in small amounts but at a very regular intervals. Something good to eat is mahuka honey. It's a natural honey made in New Zealand and is full of nutrients that can help keep the throat healthily. Finally, it's steam. Inhaling steam allows the water vapour to lubricate your vocal folds from the outside. This is a good thing to do before singing and should always be followed up by a warm-up. So, I hope those tips will help you look after your voice. Theatre is one of the biggest forms of entertainment in the world and Japan has the second biggest entertainment industry in the world. Now, one massive phenomenon in Japan at the moment is an all-girl group known as AKB48. Not only are they theatre performers, but they are also a worldwide pop phenomenon. Since being created by Yasushi Akimoto in 2005, they have broken multiple records, including the Guinness World Record for being the world's largest pop group. This girl group also falls into the genre of Japanese idols, which is a musical image concept that is vastly used in Japanese music. For AKB48, this means that when daily auditions are held, girls as young as 14 join the group and then graduate when they are older, which is usually in their early 20s. Members of the group are also not allowed to have boyfriends and must act appropriately, and if any of these rules are broken, then they will be expelled from the group. And on the odd occasion, this has occurred in the past. I will now transfer you over to an exclusive clip of their latest single, Heavy Rotation. Their biggest singles to date and have become memorable classics in Japan are Heavy Rotation and Beginner, both of which sold millions and became the first and second biggest single sold in Japan last year. They have also recently released a new single called Uza, which has changed the musical direction of this group from typical Japanese idol pop to dance music that seems to be a musical trend throughout the world. Despite their success, they are not stopping and continue to dominate the Japanese music scene with their memorable member changes and musical numbers. Now, over to Ariel. Hi, I'm Ariel and I'm going to be discussing the recent Hollywood trend for adapting live theatre sellout shows into blockbuster movies. Not only does this allow for a fresh take on much loved stories, but also generates more interest in the plays by making them more accessible to viewers at home. One of the most anticipated of these films was a Steven Spielberg directed War Horse. While this received rave reviews and six Academy Award nominations, I do feel that even the explosive action on the big screen couldn't quite compare to the awe and amazement of the live physical theatre and life-size puppetry of the National Theatre stage production. However, a play that did translate chillingly well to screen was Daniel Radcliffe's portrayal of Arthur Kipps in The Woman in Black, a tale of a scorned woman terrorising a village as a spirit. The chilling fear and suspense translated surprisingly well, and as much as you would be on the edge of your seat in the stalls of the Fortune Theatre in the West End, this film will have you jumping out of it. As well as being adapted for the big screen, we often see plays done for television. For any Shakespeare fans, I highly recommend watching the BBC's 2012 The Hollow Crown Henry IV and V series. With the cast including Jeremy Irons and Julie Walters, it was always going to be one to watch out for, but the incredible performance from the Avengers Tom Hiddleston as Prince Hal steals the show. And finally, from me, one to watch out for in the future, Les Mis will be bursting onto our screen soon, and from the previews that have been released so far, this promises to be a visual treat from an A-list cast, with an incredibly fresh rendition of I Dreamed a Dream from Anne Hathaway. This has become the centrepiece of the trailers. And now, back to Joel. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but I hope that you've all learned something new. 
Join us next week where we'll be behind the scenes of the Royal Shakespeare Company's version of Matilda. Amanda Holden will also be here to talk about her part in Shrek the Musical.